What's up? Today, I'm gonna to share with you a really simple way to increase sales, and honestly, this should not work as well as it does. I'm, I'm telling you, it's stupid. Like, I have it in my notes. What I'm going to tell you is stupid because it has nothing to do with how good your product, your service is, how good of a fit it is for the person who might buy, has nothing to do with any of that, and yet it could increase your sales if you use it intentionally. So I'm Roy Fur, this is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Let's dive into this episode. All right, uh, like I said, it should not work so well. Um, but honestly, it, there are people who are on your list, in your audience, seeing your marketing, seeing your whatever, right? Who would benefit from your product, your service, but they're not buying. It is a perfect fit for them, but they are not buying. What gives? And maybe you could make the product better, you can make the service better, you can make bigger promises, you can make all of that, and it doesn't convert these people. Well, there is a myth, and it goes back to, I think Ben Franklin was the origin of this quote. I may be wrong there, so don't quote me on it. But it's, the quote is, if you build a better mousetrap, the world will beat a path to your door. And um, if you actually look at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, if you do trademark searches for live and dead trademarks, mousetraps have more patents for different versions than any other product out there, like product keyword. There are more people who have invented patented mousetraps than any other product, thanks to that quote, right? And um, the, the thing about that is in all of that, there are certainly better mousetraps than the little piece of wood with the spring and the lever and all of that, right? There are certainly better mousetraps than that. But, but the primary mousetrap that is sold today is still that really basic piece of wood with a spring and a lever and a trigger and all of that, right? When you build a better mousetrap, the world does not beat a path to your door. I'm sorry, that quote was wrong. Better marketing, better selling is what wins. And so you can have a better product, a better service, whatever, and if you don't market it well, there are people who are the top experts in their field who are not as good at marketing themselves people who are better at any given skill than everybody else in their field, who are not as good at marketing themselves, who do not have as big or as successful of a business as the people who are not as good at them as them, but who are better marketers. So take you know, somebody that you might see on a regular basis, your dentist. Your dentist, you, odds are you are not doing business with the best dental practitioner in your town, the person who does the best job as a dentist. You are doing business with somebody who marketed in a way that resonated with you. Their marketing aligned with whatever was going to make you convert at the time. And the better marketer is the one that won. Now, maybe the marketing wasn't you, maybe it was somebody else and you got a referral, right? and maybe referral marketing as part of their strategy. But in general, it's better marketing that's bringing people back in, it's getting people uh, to come in in the first place, it's getting people to refer others, right? It's better marketing that wins. Now, even better scenario, right, is that both, right? I want you to have the best possible product in your category, the best possible service in your category, the best offer in your category, and the best marketing, right? Um, but the reality is you're gonna sell more through better marketing than through a better offer. Um, but I will say it doesn't have to be better copy. It doesn't have to be better copy, which is going to be part of what we talk about today. Um, like I said, what I'm gonna tell you is stupid. It shouldn't matter. It should not increase sales at all. It doesn't reflect the quality of the customer experience, the results that they're going to get. It doesn't reflect anything besides maybe they're more likely to get a result if they buy, right? So if you're selling something and it is going to improve someone's life and they're not buying, but you can get them to buy, 
they're going to get a better result because they took action, which is where ethical selling happens, right? You're selling something that is of legitimate value to the person who is buying it, however they define that value, right? But you're selling something that they value and you sell it in a way where they buy instead of not buy. Well, then you actually ethically served them with your marketing, with your selling by getting them to take an action that they would not have otherwise taken, right? But again, this particular way to increase sales does not reflect the quality of customer experience, but, but hey, it works, it works. And, and it's not manipulative. We're not gonna do some crazy mind tricks on somebody. It's not, I'm even gonna share an example with you in just a second from the YMCA, from the YMCA doing this, okay? And by the way, um, I, I'm also gonna share some examples like uh, Dan Kennedy, like a, 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 an extension of this lesson that I learned from Dan Kennedy and an experience that I had around this lesson with Clayton Makepeace. Um, and so you're gonna wanna stick through to the end of this episode. Here's the simple way to increase sales. Create a calendar-based marketing campaign. Create a calendar-based sales campaign. Have a deadline or deadlines with increasing urgency as you approach the deadline. Oh my God, breakthrough marketing secret. Yeah, because it works. Like it creates marketing breakthroughs versus not having it in, in place in the first place, right? So if you have a sales message or a campaign that's just like, hey, this is a great product. You should buy it. Here's all the benefits. Here's all the ways that it's gonna enhance your life. Here's the, here's the improvements that it is going to give you in terms of your relationships, your health, your wealth, whatever it is, right? Here's everything that you're gonna get out of this. Here's the miraculous way it's going to transform your life, the results that you're gonna experience, the, 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 the transformational nature of the product. But you have between now and whenever either one of us dies to actually like avail yourself of this and get the benefit from it. And um, if you don't reply before we die, then okay, whatever, right? That person, they are far less likely to reply. They're far less likely to reply. But if you say all of those great things about the product and you say, if you want it, you have to get it this week by Friday. Well, what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a few people who are like, why, why would I wait till Friday? I'm gonna get it today. And there's gonna be a bunch of people who say, okay, that's interesting. And then you're gonna remind them again you know, on Wednesday. And they're gonna say, ooh, that is interesting. I think I might want that. You're going to remind them again on Thursday and they're going to say, oh, yeah, I think I do want that. And then you're going to remind them again on Friday and they say, I'm going to get that today. And then you're going to remind them again because they haven't gotten it yet. And, you're going to, and, and they say, oh, yeah, yeah, I got to get that today. And then you're going to say, dang it, it's your last chance. You got to grab this or you're out of luck. And they're going to say, OK, OK, here's my money. Take my money. They wanted it in the first place. This is what got them to take action. And this works for basically anything if you find a way to make it work. So um, one of the great things about selling, for example, seminars and workshops and things that are delivered live is you get to say, this is coming up on this date and it's automatically built in, right? Or if you're doing a webinar, all of it is rel uh, relative to the webinar date, right? Like we're doing this webinar, it's gonna happen on this date, you gotta come, right? And then after the webinar, hopefully you're gonna say, you gotta reply in the next week right? But you can build this kind of thing into whatever you want. I do product of the month campaigns through Breakthrough Marketing Secrets, where if you're on my email list, you, you certainly get notifications about these. I say, you know, here's this valuable thing. And it starts off like, you're going to find this valuable. Here's why you're going to find it valuable. Here's the, here's the benefit that you're going to get from it. Here's the impact it's going to have on your life. Like all those good things, right? And then as we get closer and closer to the deadline, actually talk more about the deadline, right? All the way down to, I have countdown timers that I can embed in emails. When we're getting close to the deadline, I say, this is how much time you have until this goes away, right? And you may not love that level of like gimmick, marketing gimmick, but it's there because it works. People use it because it works, right? And so much of whether or not that's perceived as a gimmick is how you contextualize it, right? So it's not, can this work for me? It's how can I make this work for me? So a little Dan Kennedy trick 
um, that I actually just recommended. I was doing a half day consultation. I did a marketing audit. I was um, going through the, the design of this entire marketing program. And I don't want to go into detail about their offer besides the fact that they actually had, they have built in dates, right? And they, they already had a built in early bird pricing and a built in regular price. And it was for something that was delivered live, right? And um, I picked this up from, from Dan Kennedy from Marketing the Seminar Business. And there is this natural, uh, there's this natural additional cost associated with people who sign up for seminars at the last minute. Now, you don't want to like not let them in, right? But as the marketer, as the person putting on the event, you don't want to assume the additional cost, right? And you don't necessarily want to have 38 different deadlines associated with the seminars themselves and all that good stuff, right? So this, this person, this business has this early bird pricing and regular pricing. And I said, you know what else you could do? You could add a late registration fee, right? So um, the nature of this business is typically people are actually signing up a couple months in advance. And so the early bird price ended a couple months in advance. I said, what if, like, we leave that all in place. Early bird up to 60 days in advance. Regular price from 60 days in, right? Uh, but then at 30 days, we add a late registration fee. And so if somebody really wants to get in to this next version, right, this, this, this one that's coming up, there is a late registration fee associated with that. And it's just like the seminar. This, it's not a seminar, but just like the seminar. And um, just added that as another excuse to go to them with a deadline. So there's a deadline for the early bird. There's a deadline for the regular price. And actually, you can kind of assume that nobody is going to sign up at the late registration price. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. You can, it's fine if they don't, right? But if they do, you're getting a premium price from them. And here I have in my notes, so edgy it's used by the YMCA. What do I mean by that? Well, well, uh, my kids are involved in all sorts of different youth sports. And uh, the YMCA's youth sports program, they have this kind of rolling deadline that they use for early registration, regular registration, late registration, and it is an ever-increasing price. And I have in the past, like I try to get in with the early bird pricing. We always try to, right? But in the past, we've ended up paying late registration where we're paying, I don't know, 25, 50% more, especially maybe 50% more than the early bird price for registering late for the youth sports. And part of the reason that I point this out is there is a, a natural inclination to dismiss this and say, oh, I don't play pricing games, whatever. And I get that. I don't want to play pricing games either. But the way that the YMCA does it, it's just presented very candidly, very, very matter of fact. And they say, here's the early bird price. Here's the regular price. Here's the late registration price. And depending on when you sign up, this is how much you're going to pay. Okay? And there's a justification there for, for the late registration, right? And, you know, if your offer has a justification for late registration, you can probably feel pretty good about doing that. Really simple trick, right? But this is going to increase sales. It's going to increase revenue. It's going to increase, um, it's going to increase signups leading up to that deadline if you use it, if you build your campaigns around it. So crazy Clayton make peace story working with Clayton. Uh, we were doing this product of the month campaign and it was tied to these calendar events. It was an investment product, right? It was tied to these calendar events and we launched it the first time and it was, it was done kind of like Jeff Walker style product launch, but with, um, not with like the product launch content portion of it. It's just all the moving pieces around it. So anyways, we launch it, open the cart, make a bunch of sales, close the cart. And Clayton's like, this is where it gets interesting. <laughs> We're going to do it again. We're going to open up the cart again at a slightly higher price. So they had a big discount for the main one. And then slightly higher price, opened up the cart again, made a whole bunch more sales, closed the cart again. 
And then we made a couple edits to the promotion because it was all based on calendar events related to investment opportunities. Open it up again, made a bunch of sales, closed it again. Open it up again, made a bunch of sales, closed it again. Little edits in between, right? And then we said, you know what? This is still working pretty well. Let's keep going. So we made some more significant edits because, you know, calendars, whatever, they change, right? Time keeps slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. <laughs> but we, we made some more edits and we opened it again and made a bunch more sales and opened it again. This is the sixth time, mind you, sixth time. And we made the highest revenue out of all of them so far, opening it for the sixth time. Not the most sales. The most sales was earlier when it was a little cheaper, but this was the highest revenue. Revenue we wouldn't have had otherwise if we didn't go for the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth time. And then we did it one more time and made almost as much revenue the seventh as we did the sixth. Rolling deadlines over the course of a calendar. Now, I'm not saying everything should have seven deadlines like that, but there was a system in place when appropriate to do rolling deadlines with price increases every step of the way. So like every time we relaunch it, this was a high ticket product, but every time we relaunched it, it was like for the next week, you can get it, but it's $100 more than last time. And we didn't have heavy reference to the last time. And this is a, an audience that gets a lot of pitches, right? But it was still like, it was crazy effective. Made a ton of money that we wouldn't have made otherwise if it weren't for opening it again and again and again with one calendar campaign after another. My call to action for you at the end of this episode is to ask yourself how you can use this. You don't have to do like crazy seven deadline rolling campaign, whatever, right? You don't have to do that, right? But how can you use the principles and strategies laid out with this really simple way to increase sales in your business? Ask yourself, you know, you can leave a comment with this episode, let me know, but ask yourself how you can use this. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you get more content like this delivered to you. If you want to know more about how to structure these campaigns, I do have training called Fast Cash Flow Email Campaigns. It gets into this quite a bit. It's part of the BTMS Insiders Training Library. I have other training there as well that you get access to with membership that um, also goes into campaign structure and so on. Uh, but the Fast Cash Flow Email Campaigns is something you might want to check out. And if you heard half day consultation with Roy and you're interested in that, check out the link to my fractional CMO and copy chief services for direct response marketers. That's something that I do have available. The half day consultation is something, um, you know, that's a great way to get connected and have me identify opportunities to create breakthroughs in your business. Any relationship there starts with a fairly simple intro call where we figure out if it even makes sense to, to talk afterwards. So check those out. The links are in the description. I'm Roy Furr, this is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets, and I'll see you again in the next episode. See you soon. Bye. Thank you once again for tuning in to this daily episode of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Remember, check out the links with this episode for even more value. Now make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and engage in every way you can to keep this show going and growing and delivering daily value to you. I'll catch you soon for your next big breakthrough.